Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at a couple of really useful tools that you can use on basically any kind of interactive and immersive experience or installation, and that is going to be looking at some of the NDI tools. Now you've probably heard a lot of people talk about NDI tools, especially pros saying, oh, they can do this, they can do that, they help our workflow so much. But I find there's not a lot of really deep dive into which specific tools you should use and which ones the pros are talking about. So today we're going to be looking at a handful of them, but before we dive in, if you haven't downloaded the NDI tools yet, what you're going to want to do is go to ndi.tv forward slash tools, or if you even do a basic web search about NDI tools, you are going to pop up right on their first result here, and that's going to take you to this website just dedicated to the NDI tools. You're going to want to download it. And one nice thing that I recommend is if you are diving more into the tools, the website is actually really becoming a great learning resource where they tell you a little bit more about what each one of the tools does. And they even have some different videos that guide you through setting some of them up. And even more recently, a helpful thing they have is, are the short little videos next to each one of the tools, just giving you a quick overview of what they do. So if you see something that we're using here today and you want to dive in further, I highly recommend even just checking out the website as a good resource. Now, once you've gone ahead and downloaded the NDI tools, what you're going to notice is they're going to appear inside of your start menu. So if I open up my start menu and I'm on Windows 11 here, I'm going to go to all apps and I'm going to fly down till I find NDI 5 tools. Now all the tools are inside of this folder. And this is important to know because if you've never used the tools before or you haven't really memorized the names of them yet, it can be really hard because you can't really just search inside of the start menu for NDI because that's only going to give you a specific app named NDI, but it's not going to show you the rest of the NDI tools that you just downloaded. So knowing that if you go to the all apps and you scroll down and you find that NDI five tools folder, you can see all of the tools in here. Now there's going to be five tools that we're going to take a quick look at today just to give you a little bit of excitement and, and help you get started with them. We're going to look at the webcam input, test pattern, studio monitor, and the two screen capture tools. So probably the best place to start are the studio monitor and test patterns. And what you'll often hear when pros are troubleshooting and working on installations and we're using any kind of real network communication is if something's not working, the first thing we do is try and isolate whether it's the application, the network, or some other element of the puzzle. And one really easy way to do that is using the Studio Monitor and Test Patterns app. So for example, if I had a system where I had Touch Designer here running, and I'm going to use Touch Designer just as a kind of little testing platform for receiving and sending these NDI signals. Let's say I'm supposed to be receiving NDI input from another system, and I'm not seeing anything come in. Well, what I can do is maybe even grab my laptop or another system on that same network, go ahead and open up that test patterns app. So let's do that now. And what I can start to do is just generate some really simple, easy to use test patterns and just see, okay, was it the sending application that was having trouble sending its NDI to me? Or is it on the receiving side that I'm having trouble receiving that signal? So for example, now that I have this NDI test patterns tool open, what I can do in my source name here is click on it and I can see right on my computer, which is desktop 3PP40TI or one, I see test pattern. So in this case, if you're new to working with NDI, the first chunk of the name is always gonna be the system name and then whatever's inside the bracket is gonna be the app or stream name. So in this case, I can click on test pattern give it a moment to load. And now I'm going to be able to see those same test patterns coming out of the NDI test pattern tool. Now, this is great just because I can just spit some quick signals out of here without having to install a whole other application just to see is it, you know, is touch designer having trouble receiving it is notch having trouble sending it, you know, is unreal having trouble receiving or sending it. You can really quickly rule those out. Now, two other really nice things that the NDI test patterns can do is one, you can actually load in a custom image to send. So for example, here I have just a simple royalty free stock image of some networking gear that I used for a blog post recently. And I have that now I can send that over NDI. You can even load your own custom test patterns in here. Another thing you can do is if you wanted to test to make sure the audio signal is working okay, you can also send a one kilohertz tone at different volumes. 
and then whether you're inside a touch design or another application, see if that audio is coming through correct. So this is just a great little quick testing tool if ever you need to test if NDI is working or not, really great tool. Now the other side of the same coin is the NDI Studio Monitor. So if I go ahead and open that up, that's basically the same functionality, but instead of sending, it just lets you receive NDI signals from anywhere on the network and just displays them in a small window. So I'll go ahead and open that up here. And what happens is first it starts with a black window, which is not the most intuitive, but how you access the menu and change which stream you're looking at is by just right clicking anywhere inside of here. And similarly, you'll see at the top here is a list of systems. And then if I go into that, I can see a list of sources. So I can similarly see that test pattern source. I can click on it, give it a second, and it's gonna go ahead and load. Now this is great because just like I was saying before, when it comes to troubleshooting network communications on installations, the systems can get real complicated and it could be a lot of pieces of the puzzle. And this can be a really easy way just to see, like we said before with our test pattern tool, is it the sender? Is it the receiver? You know, where is the signal kind of getting caught and not getting across? Is it the application side of things? So these two tools, even though they're very easy to use, have a lot of power. Now this NDI Studio Monitor also has the ability to record signals. Personally, I can say I've never really tested that because if I needed to record something, I'll use something like OBS uh, or even Touch Designer, which give me a lot more flexibility with what I can do with those recordings. But if you ever need it in a pinch, you'd be able to do that with this tool as well. So now with those two tools out of the way, we can dive into some of the more fun ones. Now, one of the tools that you'll see recommended a lot is the webcam input, which used to actually have a different name called scan converter, which <laughs> I think they changed for a good reason because scan converter was not the easiest name to work with. And essentially what this does is it creates a virtual webcam on the system that can receive NDI inputs and feed them into any other application that receives just a normal webcam input. So in this case, I have my Zoom settings hiding here. And let's say I wanted to create some generative content inside a touch designer or maybe take my webcam feed, put some effects on top of it and feed it into a Zoom conference, maybe some kind of webinar or really whatever you wanted. What I could do in this case is because Zoom itself doesn't accept NDI feeds, let me set up a little quick actually NDI feed inside a touch designer here. So I'll just go ahead, make a movie file in top. I'm gonna put count.mov as the movie here. And I'll feed that into an NDI out top. And I'll leave that name touch designer, that's perfectly fine. So now in this case, if we were imagining that this was some kind of interesting graphics or nice filters that I had on my camera, you know, something like background removal, face tracking, any of those kind of things, and I wanted to feed that into my Zoom call, what I could do is go back into those NDI tools, find this webcam input and open it. Now, one thing you're gonna notice with the next three tools that we use, the webcam and the two screen captures, is unlike traditional applications, they're not gonna open up in our kind of bottom left apps area of our taskbar. Instead, they're gonna add a small little icon into the bottom right area of our taskbar. And in this case, I can see that I have this new webcam input app here. And this is where you do all of the controls for this webcam input app because it really doesn't have that much to control. So if I go ahead and right click on this, Similarly to before, at the top of this list is gonna show me a list of all systems that have any kind of NDI output. And if I go into that menu, I can see the different sources here. So I could go ahead and hit Touch Designer and basically tell this NDI webcam input app, grab the NDI stream coming from Touch Designer, wrap that and pretend it's a webcam for any other application that wants it. So now the nice thing is I can go ahead and do that, grab that video feed, and then go back into Zoom and actually select this new tech NDI video, which is the name they've given to their kind of virtual webcam. And now you can see I have that same output stream of content coming from Touch Designer right over into Zoom. And this doesn't just apply to Zoom. I mean, Zoom is not the most fun application we all know, but whether you're using apps like, um, I believe the Snap Filters app really only works with webcams if you're using maybe some web applications or WebGL applications that want you to feed in a webcam input to do some cool effects, this can be a really easy way to grab 
content from another system or application, wrap it into a virtual webcam and feed it into that system. Now this also allows you to do audio. So for example, if I move this out of the way, maybe make a quick audio file in Chop in Touch Designer to load some music. I can go ahead, feed this as the audio chop here on my NDI out top, and then back inside of my webcam input settings here, I can go to audio and I can do things like select how many channels do I want from that NDI stream, what level do I want them at, and those are gonna come across Equally easily, if I go to audio, for example, I can take my microphone, change that as well, and make that the line from New Tech NDI Audio, and that's gonna also keep those two things together in sync nicely, and I'll have both the audio and video coming across as a virtual webcam. So that's a really fun tool. You can use that to connect a ton of different things together. You could even use it to connect apps that maybe don't have NDI, or maybe you don't want to use NDI on the receiving side of things for some reason very, very useful. Now the final two that we're gonna look at, and I should give a quick warning that just because of the way my system is set up, they don't actually work on my system in particular. I'm not sure if it's because of the combination of my RTX card with my AMD CPU, but I'm gonna show you anyways because these have served me a ton in the past, and especially when you're working on projects where you may not have full control over somebody's system, and you don't wanna install a ton of, you know, touch designers or notches or unreals, which are really big applications that probably require some kind of licensing. Uh, a really good example might be if you're creating a system for a conference or a keynote and you wanna be able to grab some PowerPoint presentations from a speaker's laptop. This is where the NDI tools could be really helpful because it's a really small application to install, doesn't, it's not gonna bloat their hard drive and it's really easy for them to uninstall it after. And what these screen capture tools allow you to do, if I open one of them up, I'll open up first the screen capture without the HX, and I'll come back to the HX version in a minute. If I open that up, very similar to that webcam input, it's gonna add a little tray icon here, and on Mac OS, it would kind of be in the top taskbar. What I can do is right click on this and immediately start doing screen capture of my screen and feeding that out over NDI. Now, by default, I usually suggest leaving a lot of the settings default because they're gonna use things like use the monitor's refresh rate, um, capture audio or not capture audio, but these are really easy and intuitive settings to go through yourself. One that I highly recommend usually turning on is inside of the capture settings. There's a mouse pointer, which by default is off. Maybe that could be better if you're doing something like PowerPoint presentations, but in general, if you maybe even wanna do screen recordings of a project, make sure you turn that on, otherwise nobody is gonna know where your mouse is. I can speak from personal experience, I've done that one. So once you have this basic setup of whether it's a frame rate and the capture settings and your audio source, what you can do is drop in something like an NDI input, and inside of your source name, you would actually see I can see my system name here and I can actually see the GPU that it's capturing the display of and a little number on the end that tells you which display number it is. So if you had two or three screens, you would see something like NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 laptop GPU 1, 2, 3, etc. Now in this case, like I mentioned, because of the system's setup, it doesn't seem to be working that correctly. but depending on what you need it for, it could be a very, very useful tool. I've actually used it a ton in the past, especially like I said, on those projects where you might need to capture the screen of someone who you don't wanna have to install a full touch designer app and license it, or someone who you don't wanna have to install a full Unreal or Notch app and get those up and running and installed and licensed. These screen capture tools can be very useful. Now, one other thing that the screen capture tool can do quite well is not only capture the screen itself, the desktop, it can actually capture the webcam and webcam audio source and actually feed those over NDI. So you can almost think of it as a little tap that you can put onto somebody's computer, grab their screen, grab their webcam, grab its audio, and then feed all of those things over NDI to your you know, main media server that's gonna do the processing and windowing and compositing. So if you wanted to do that, you could come over to this webcam audio source or webcam video source here, select which one of the devices you want, 
And then in this case, I have webcam video source OBS virtual camera selected. If I go to that NDI input, I can see here desktop 3PP 40Ti OBS virtual camera. Now in this case, my OBS virtual camera is not on because it's recording, but you get the idea of how this works. So that's a very useful one. I've used that a ton in the past. The other final tool in this kind of equation here is the same tool, the screen capture tool, but with an HX on the end. Now in this case, what the HX refers to is GPU acceleration. Now in most cases, I believe these are going to be most useful if you have an RTX GPU. If you don't have an RTX GPU, this probably isn't gonna be very useful for you because I believe it uses a lot of NVIDIA's encoders and decoders to do that GPU acceleration. Uh, let me open it again here. And once that's open, very similarly to the other tools, it's gonna drop itself into the bottom right of your taskbar, and I can see Screen Capture HX, and it's gonna be really, really similar to the other Screen Capture tool, except it's gonna have a few more options for bandwidth and codec that it's gonna use. Uh, these are two options that the NVIDIA GPUs can encode for, and it's also gonna give you a few extra options in terms of frame rates and resolutions. Now, one thing that is a little bit disappointing about the HX tool, which I hope they add in the future, is that ability that the screen capture tool has to, to kind of tap into a webcam or audio source. This HX version really is focused on just capturing your screen and maybe the audio of whatever you're playing out of in that moment. Now, with that said, if you are going to be using that HX version, because that is using the NVIDIA GPUs, if you're in something like Touch Designer and you're receiving those streams, just make sure you turn on this hardware decode option, because that's gonna make sure that you're keeping a GPU pipeline from beginning to end of that process. So with that said, I hope that gives you a quick rundown of some of these NDI tools that you've probably heard about. Uh, a lot of pros are using these daily on projects, whether it's the test patterns, the studio monitor, the webcam inputs, or either of the screen capture tools. They're very, very, very phenomenal. They're stable. I've used them on big, big, big projects without any kind of worry. So I hope you can dive in with them too. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.